What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. I'm bringing you another blade. This one is another one sent to me by a YouTuber. Uh, this was sent by Tubes5150, aka Cowboy C Bop. And uh, this one right here is the uh, Timber Rattler Ozark Trail Hunter, also known as the TR134. So he, he sent me this. He got two of them, right? And he sent me this. Because he wanted to, to know what's going on. It has what he thought was a hairline crack in the handle, right? And he was right. It really does. So he got another one, and it had the same thing, and he thought maybe that's just the way they all come. But this is hand-carved bone. This isn't a wooden handle. This is actually bone. So um, so with bone, you have a lot of natural, um, a lot of natural cracks and veins and fractures in it already. So... If it's glued on right though you really generally don't have to worry about it now the only thing that would cause a concern is the fact that this does have a rat tail um, and I don't know where the tang actually ends in this um, but there's only one way to find out if it's strong enough and that's to use it so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna use the Ozark so let's go over this thing first let's start with this guy Ah, Timber Rattler, you know, for a budget knife, they make a pretty decent sheath. Um, this one, this one just smells good. The leather on this one is, has been tooled, has been worked like most of them do. They have their insignia there, but it's a good sheath. Just a good sheath. So now, let's get into this Hunter. Let's see how she do. Um, we are talking about, I believe it's 12 inches with a 7 inch blade. Let me look. Oh, yeah, 12 inches overall, 7-inch blade. That's exactly it. Now, you have wood and brass spacers front to back. You have the brass um, guard, brass pommel, and again, with the rat tail. And you can see that it's stainless, so it's not something foreign welded onto this. It's just another piece of stainless. Um, the knife is pretty thin. I'm guessing 3, 3.5 three millimeters. Um, it's pretty thin. And it is a 440 variety, I can almost guarantee. It is a Pakistan. Yeah, so it's it's going to be a 440. Let's go over the likes and don't likes. Um, this um, guard, the decorative guard, I really like. I think that that is pretty sweet. It's just a bunch of little uh, little notches cut into there and a little scores and it, it's actually kind of cool and they have the two lines that go around that's nice the brass spacers with the wood in between is nice the green bone is nice um they have uh some texturing here on the handle and it does have somewhat of a finger guard but it gives just enough uh difference in the grip to add a little something um i do like all that i like that it's a clip point um, and the stainless variety does rust less, so that's good. So let's get into the don't likes about the Timber Rattler Ozark, whatever the hell it was called, the Ozark Trail Hunter buoy. All right, so now here's your Ricasso right here, right? But then you have this extended piece right here before the grind starts. So you have a seven inch blade but now you're looking at like a you know six inch or less five and three quarter inch actual cutting edge so this right here and you can see how it steps this is kind of useless they could have started the grind here and gave you more of a cutting edge that would have made more sense that way you would have still had enough for Casso to put your finger on if you wanted to do tight work um, but having a curved guard you almost don't have to um, I wish it was a little bit thicker, and um, I wish that the tang inside before it becomes a rat tail was a little thicker. If you look down, you can see where almost the blade starts, which is there's not a whole lot of meat to go with the potatoes, you know what I mean, sticking through there. Um, so that's that. The swedge is done pretty well, I'll give it that. The edge... Well, it's like rubbing a spoon across your body. There's not much. Um, there's not much of an edge on that guy. I didn't even break hairs. So I mean, this is, this is. Let's see. 
that's as dull as they come for and i'm pushing you can see watch watch the meat go down meat go down do 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 no blood no blood no blood all right so that's a little something that i'm gonna have to get onto. i'm gonna have to get onto that edge another thing is they didn't do a great job at the tip you can see there's a little tiny hiccup i don't know if you can see it it's like a two-step area right there in the tip it comes straight then goes that's not supposed to be that way that's just a, gr a fault in the grind and actually you can feel it with your finger a little flick right here so overall aesthetically from a distance especially the um the blade is pretty you know what i mean you'd see this in a catalog and you'd go hell yeah that looks great especially for the price um you're picking these up you know depending on if you're getting free shipping you're around 20 bucks um between 20 25 bucks probably and if you're paying a little five bucks for shipping you can find these for 15 bucks you know what i mean uh it's a, a budget knife in all its forming glory so what we want to do though is we want to know if is can this rat tailed budget knife hold up to some real world use so that's what we're going to find out right now we're going to take it outside and we're going to put it through the ringer and see how she do so let's go do that all right so we know that it's not going to saw through my hand very well but let's see if it'll if it'll slice through a bottle let's test it out holy crap hold on a second hold on a second so, <laughs> all right she's dull <laughs> the knife is definitely going to need an edge and that's something i'm going to work on because here's where i hit and i kind of cut the paper but it just blew out the bottom this is like Ooh, bad time on chili day right there. That was <laughs> not healthy. So I hit the bottle with a pretty good pace, hit it with a pretty good angle, and with an edge, that would have went right through. This one obviously did not. So let's see if the tip, there we go. All right, so we are able to slice through the bottle, but we aren't able to send it through. Let's keep going. All right, I was trying to press record and it was not cooperating. Let me just adjust you guys a little better so you don't fall down there. All right, so let's do some uh, four foot drops and we'll see how well balanced it is in a straight fall. That's not so bad. That's not so bad. Let's do that again. So four feet through the air. It does all right doing that. We're going to do a couple of hard downward throws, and we're going to see, A, how well this guard stays on, B, how well this pommel stays on, and C, how well that crack stays. All right, so you can hear the little rattle, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing necessarily. All right, that actually hit pretty solid. You can see the depth, how far that went in. Oh, not too bad. So let's see. We'll do some light prize. Now, with a, with a knife... If you have a rat-tailed knife and you have no idea what the inside looks like, holding your knife for a pry at the end is bad juju. Don't do that. If you're gonna, um, if you're gonna do some kind, of, don't have to worry about stabbing myself if I drop it. <laughs> I cut myself. So, if you're gonna do any kind of prying, hold the blade around the ricasso with your pinky and pry from there. Let all the prying take place here and not here so low is good when you're prying but when you stab make sure you pick your pinky up here then go don't do this because you have a better chance of sliding down and taking off your pinky so let's get back on to it let's see so far so good we're ch taking chunks out so that's not so bad let's see Let's see, this I, I already know pretty much the answer to. We're going to see if it does anything at all. We'll start with a push. <laughs> no, it didn't dent it. Now we're going to try and saw. Oh, jeepers, I'm actually pushing. No, so the nylon rope, 
isn't good. Now here's a good a good tell right here. I do a lot of blades and I do the nylon rope thing. And for people who don't know the nylon rope, you might be thinking, oh yeah, okay, you cut a nylon rope with another knife. Who cares? Maybe that it's just that's what knives do. They go right through that. If you don't have an edge, it's not gonna cut. And this edge is sharp enough for other things. So don't get it wrong. Like right there, you see that? It's sharp enough to separate that stick. If I put my finger down and hit it, it's gonna separate my finger. Um, so don't think that I'm using, you know, something as dull as a spine to try and cut that. You need an edge to cut through this stuff. That's that's good stuff. So let's continue. We're gonna do some um, we're gonna do some drags here and see if we can't find the right angle. And it looks like we did to make this successful doing some kind of camping and bushcraft oh yeah I'll tell you what once you find your angles on this guy um, feather sticking is kind of a joy now you'll notice I'm rotating the knife as I go and I'll show you why as once we get down there look at the bundle look at this bundle I made right it goes kind of around. This one was already there. But you see how that is. Those curls are really nice and tight. That right there will take spark very, very, very easily. So we have that. Let's take uh, do a little kitchen prep. I know we already chopped a stick, but we'll do a little kitchen prep test here. Yep. And uh, I wanted to use a harder wood, so... I brought out some sycamore sticks for that. So it does all that. So the edge needs to be redone. I mean, I can feel the ridges in the edge. So, I mean, it's just not a very good edge. The tip is good. And here's something I like that I didn't get into. Look at the, um, look at the swell, the contouring of this handle. It starts out really thin right here. And it swells up here and it kind of goes back in just a little bit. That gives, a pretty comfortable grip when you're holding on to this and um, being bone hand carved bone uh, you, they're generally in it for the looks and not so much for the feel because you, you know you have to be careful with your materials that's actually pretty good that's pretty good let's keep going all right so we found out we realized and we know now that the blade is not sharp but it's not sharp on things like my skin and some other stuff let's check how it'll be on some of this loose stuff right so can I use it to take out some things if I'm hiking through a trail and this is what I come up against and I'm like, oh crap, I have to walk through all this. Can I take this knife out and use it as a makeshift temporary machete? Well, let's see. All day long, all day long. So, so for that, for light stuff, it actually... Uh, it goes through pretty easily and I'll get a nice low spot right here so you can see there's a little thicker one let's get rid of the small guy let's get rid of this small guy and you see it does that just fine so now I'm walking through I need a path I don't even need to swing I mean it's just watch a little okay grip like you swing a kukri boom and look at these these are those little milk weeds right the little hollow stems but you find these a lot outside and if you need to get through them rather than you know stepping on them all you just look at this a little okay grip boom and that's done so now i can make myself a hole i can get to where i need to get to even with a dull knife so think about it once i sharpen this and i'm gonna sharpen it that's gonna change the game on this one but i can't sharpen it before i do the review because then it's not an honest review so i have to sharpen it out of the box i mean i use it test it out of the box I'm wicked smart. Hold on. All right, so I want to do a little batoning. First, I need to set up a baton. So let's see. All right. All right. So you got to remember, when you buy an axe or how you have a hatchet, generally they're not all razor sharp, but they still tend to do the job when it comes to chopping, right? That's what they do. They chop. So you don't necessarily and always need a crazy sharp edge to do things like cutting wood. And here you see, I'm still able 
to peel away the bark off the tree. It's just finding angles. Even with a dull knife, if you find an angle, you'll be able to use it, all right? So let's, uh, let's take this guy right here, put it down. Now that we have a baton, see if we can get through. That was pretty easy. That was pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Oh, this stuff is gonna burn nice. This is dry. So, look at this. Look at this, guys. I mean, this is a knife you could pick up for between 15 and 20 bucks. And uh, it's not gonna be great probably out of the box. Who knows, maybe I got a dull one. That happens. I've recommended knives that came to me shave sharp and other people have gotten them and said hey mine isn't shave sharp you know it's just just the way it is sometimes so you might get one that's a lot sharper than this one you might not but here's the thing it's 440 it's going to um it's going to sharpen really freaking easy i mean really easy that's the that's the good part about it so you know this is uh this isn't going to be too bad of a little um, a little extra duty camp knife, especially if you're just looking for a budget camp knife and you happen to have a couple of sharpening stones at home. Something like this isn't bad, and it's good looking. You know what I mean? That's half the battle right there, if I ask me. All right, so you know I like to throw things, and when you have a stag handle that's cracked, you're probably not going to want to throw it. But, you know, it's five yards with a rat tail. Let's see if we don't break it. That's my first throw. That's my first throw with this knife. Whew. Was it perfect? Nope. Does it have to be? Nope. Look at that. That's in there pretty good, though. Look at that. That was in there pretty good. Five-yard throw. So, hey, Cowboy Seabop, when you watch this, now you know. If the neighborhood bully pisses you off. You can get them from five yards away. I mean, the neighborhood Bigfoot. The neighborhood Bigfoot pisses you off. <laughs> All right. So, so here we have it, man. What was it? TR134, something like that. Ozark Trail Hunter. Can't remember 100%. But um, right there, that's a good looking blade. And with an edge, this thing is going to be a, uh, a pretty good blade. I mean, as far as work in the woods, I can definitely, even with a dull edge, I can work it in the woods. You saw that. I can baton with it. I can feather stick with it. I can chop off branches and limbs. Um, I can go through light stuff and use it as a short arm machete. Uh, you know, I can throw it if I have to. Um, it's going to do the tasks you need it for in the woods. The one thing it's not going to be able to do like you want a hunting knife to do is skin. You're not going to be able to skin with a knife like this until you sharpen it. But here's the thing, once I sharpen it, this will belly a rabbit all day long. You know what I mean? Oh, and speaking of rabbit, hold on guys, hold on. I wanna show you a new addition to the family. My dogs got into a nest and uh, I pre-recorded a little bit I was holding them earlier. I wanna show you this guy. All right, so quick little detour right here, a little time out. My dogs invaded a nest of rabbits, all right? And this was the only survivor. My bloodhound was pinning it down and uh, he doesn't bite him, he just likes to hold him down. The problem is his saliva ends up drowning him. And this little guy right here has survived, so I've had him with me for a couple days now. This little rabbit, it's hard to tell it's a rabbit, but it is, it's a rabbit. And uh, so this little guy we're kinda taking on. Figured we owed it to him, you know? And uh, he's done pretty good. With getting used to us in just a just a day and a half, whatever it's been. Eyes are still closed. I don't know if we can get a good shot of that. There he is. Yeah, his eyes are still closed. But uh he's feeding. We're using some we're using some kitten formula and some carrots and some dried grass and whatnot. So this is just a little uh a little hello to my new little buddy. Figured I'd show you guys this, you know, this little guy. He's a pretty cool man, pretty cool. I, I call him Spooky. We haven't given him a name yet. 
Um, and the reason I call him spooky is because for the first day, every time I touched his head, he would flip out. He wouldn't flip out if I touched his body, but as soon as I touched his head, he would jump like he was being spooked. So uh, that's why I started calling him spooky. But uh, cool little rabbit, man. Cool little rabbit. We're going to start taking care of this guy and uh, see what we can do with him. All right, let's get back on. Cute as hell, right? Cute as hell. So we got got a little bunny in the family now that I'm going to have to raise up till it's big enough to uh, to let go and possibly by the time that happens they're going to want to keep it anyway so who knows but cool man it's a cute little bunny cute little bunny rabbit and as soon as i sharpen this <laughs> so i won't do that to the bunny so um so yeah here you go here you go bone handle decorative little hunting knife not too bad not too bad for timber rattler all right so that's it for me that's it for this i'm donnie b all day and until next knife coming in